I also take the monitor. I can't believe this. <laughs> I can't believe this. Well, the thing is, Sam. <laughs> this is the new work from home, right? It, this is exactly, look at my this pile. Is the, this, this is the new remote desktop. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Off Grid Down Under podcast and video series. Hey guys, welcome back to our next podcast episode, Off Grid Down Under. Very exciting today. It's a bit of a show and tell session and I'm going to introduce you to our marketing manager at MDC Campers and Caravans and that's Sam Morehouse. He is amazing but he's a fellow camper and traveller and we had a brief. We thought we came up with the idea in the office to actually show you guys what we take away when we go camping. And so Sam went away and wrote his little <laughs> brief. <list. laughs> my res- yeah, my yeah, response to the brief. Response. I wrote mine and they were radically different. So after we stopped laughing so hard at each other, we thought how great if we actually just present it with each other. So Absolutely. tell us a little bit about yourself, Sam, and your credibility in the <laughs> camping world. I don't know about credibility, <laughs> maybe experience. Uh, look, I've always been a camper, love the outdoors, always love the outdoors. And uh, look, through years and years of off-roading, camping, um, and I guess watching how other people travel and uh, how they enjoy the outdoors, I've learned a few things along the way through personal experience and through things I've witnessed, um, and also just advice from other people as well. So yeah. I think communities and being involved with other groups of like-minded people are the best way to really pick up skills, pick up knowledge as well, and um, yeah, ears always open, and uh, not always thinking you might know everything. Somebody else might know a little bit more than you from time to time. Only, only randomly. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah, Sometimes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, all right, I'm going to because you're the guest. Thank you. I'm going to let you show me what you take when you go camping and what's at the top of your list. Yeah, look, I mean, looking at the table, they're pretty different. There's some pretty different piles here. There's <laughs> seems to be a lot of mechanical and mm. uh, a lot more comfort here. So. Uh huh. Uh huh. I guess I've approached the brief of if you're going out back, if you're going off grid at any any extended period of time or any time at all, even if it's an overnight trip, mm. like there's nothing worse than being caught out with something really simple that you know you've got sitting at home and you just wish and you had it there bring with it. you. Yeah, I know. That's how I approach things. So a lot of what I have might look very busy, but it's actually really simple things. Um, so I guess to start off, we're towing trailers. Like MDC, we yeah. make amazing caravans, camper trailers. That's what we take out. That's what we use. Personally, I tow the camper trailer. It suits better with my car, the towing capacity of my car. So that's what I use with my family. Um, but other people have vans. So that's everyone. It, a lot of these are going to be applicable to whatever that is. And we've got to say, a lot of the comfort's already built into the caravan as well. So perhaps so what are you my, doing? my could be a little bit of overkill. <laughs> but give me a chance to respond. Absolutely. <laughs> I just wanted to say that. So yours is actually quite sensible. I probably should hang out with you at least in my convoy. Yeah, look, I guess that, that's how I think of it. So conversely, the way I think about it is if I'm in a convoy, I don't want to be held up by something simple either. If yeah. I can help somebody solve the problem, then yeah. fantastic. All right, show us what you got. Okay, so first things first. If I'm towing a trailer, I want to make sure it's safe and it's not going anywhere. Always carry spare bow shackles or D shackles. These are, give me, they're so easy, so small, throw mm-hmm. them in the glove box of your car. It doesn't matter where they sit. I've seen them rattling around in my car. They're, they're there, <laughs> they're probably there, you just don't know what they're for. Yeah, I wasn't sure. So look, the key thing with bow shackles and D shackles is ensuring that you use the right shackle rated for the application or the ve- or the, the, the trailer that you're actually towing. Mm. So every shackle must be a rated to Australian standards shackle. Mm-hmm. They will be indicated by essentially the working load limit, which will be stamped on an accredited shackle. Um, For the example, these are a 0.75 tonne shackle and these are a one tonne shackle. So one tonne shackles, yeah, up for a larger trailer, smaller trailer, smaller shackle. Easiest way to think about it, whatever your trailer is supplied with, make sure you get the same rating bow shackle or D shackle to, yeah, use. Already, and, and showing, with. already showing off a lot of knowledge here. My, my descriptions are probably going to be a little shorter. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. But more stories. The other thing, <laughs> being a camper trailer, um, I have a, essentially, I've got to make sure the lid's shut and it's not going to pop yeah. up while we're driving down the road. Yeah. Split pins or um, lynch pins, whatever you want to call these. Essential. Yeah, essential. Look, you can use other things to get by, but they're so easy, small, really easy to have. So you take spares, do you? Always carry extras. Okay. If I've got two on the trailer, I'll make sure I've got at least two spares. Do you? Okay. So good to know. The other one is, and I've been a victim of this. Me too. Toe I know. plug. Yeah, I know. 
Simplest thing. Um, look, there are various different tow plugs available. On uh, my particular vehicle, it's a seven pin. Uh, but we do a lot of 12 pins on the trailers now, especially the bigger caravans. Mm -hmm. um, always carry a spare one of these. The thing that I want to flag, I guess, now is I'm not carrying these with the view that I'm fixing all the problems. Mm. Although mm. I will try, I will probably <laughs> do it in my circumstance. Yeah, sometimes just, you have there's to. There's not an expectation that people should be able to do this themselves. Yeah, yeah. It's about having the material available to you to keep you on your way. Often if you're travelling with other people, yeah. they'll have skills too. So there might be a mechanic with you. There might be somebody who's just a good DIY handyman or, just a bush or woman. Mechanic, yeah. A bush mechanic. Yeah. If you've got the parts, you can fix the problem. That's exactly what happened. If you don't have them, can't fix them. That happened to me heading into Cape York with my, my Anderson plug fell out. Is exactly what happened. Yeah. I didn't have an Anderson plug. <laughs> I had no skills. <laughs> Thankfully, someone in my convoy arrived within that moment and helped me out. But what would have been great is if I actually had it in the vehicle, anybody could have yeah. helped me out. So, Correct. Yeah, Look, I get it. Great segue. Anderson plug. Yeah. Again, it's not about knowing how to yeah recrimp the wires, anything like that. A lot of people do. It's not a difficult process, but it's important to do it properly. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's just a matter of yeah finding somebody that may be able to help. Even if it's a mechanic yeah. at the next town, you might got it, get in there, and especially if you're going to the Big Red Bash where there's 20,000 people, uh, you don't think that mechanic might have had a bit of traffic through there before. Yeah, yeah. If he hasn't got a supply truck coming for a couple of weeks or That's exactly another couple of days, you'll be sitting at Kunnamulla and not... Any Ed country Virgil. town. That happens in any country town, really. We sort of forget about that when we live in a city, but most regional centres, yeah, you've got to wait yeah. for the materials to come in. And mm. I'm an impatient person, so yeah. I don't want to wait. When you've got three young children, yes, <laughs> yeah. you are. You've got to keep going, keep going. Yeah. Well, look, that's a little intro to some of mine. What else, what have you got? Well, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to keep mine specific to, because I'm going away to the Big Red Bash really shortly, and, you know, like that Big Red Bash t-shirt, and I've got the MDC owner's hat on. So from a woman's perspective, I'm sort of thinking about about how am I going to be comfortable when I go away. I, I really should probably respect a little bit more what's on your list and have that in backup as well. Because <laughs> usually I've just got like a couple of screwdrivers and a yep. wrench and, I, and like the thing that tightens up the nuts on the caravan. Oh yeah, the tyre iron. Or, the tie, yeah, 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 so I do all that. So I'm actually not completely silly, but as far as the other stuff, you know, I will take note of what you're saying. Sure, that's but right. I guess like, I don't even know where to start. So I'm just going to start from the top. <laughs> start, start from the start. I know, I know. My makeup. <laughs> because this is what makes you feel like a normal human being when you're out camping, particularly when you're at the Big Red Bash. So I just keep it really compressed. I think that's pretty good for a chick. I've got makeup and toiletries all in the one thing with each pocket. So just keep it compressed. But this is probably, if somebody said, what's the thing you can't live with when you go to off-grid? Somewhere like the Big Red Bash. And we're going to be there for six days because of three days early entry, three days there. Yeah, it's a long Even, time. I know, I'm in the it's caravan. I've got a lot of power and stuff. But you can't use, the realistically, you can't have a shower every single day because... A, you've got to store all your grey water when you're there. So you've got that issue of like where you're going to store all the extra water. But you also, you don't want to waste all your water because you've got to use it for drinking well, you've purposes. To, you've got to kind of calculate <laughs> it, don't you? You really You have do. to really think about how long does it take to have a shower, how much am I using. This is when these come in That's handy. That's the alternative. They're called baby wipes. <laughs> and I think most people have been out there. These are a life saviour. Yeah. And these things you use daily, multiple times a day. And they really are actually pretty fabulous. And... You just use your own imagination how and when you use them. But same thing, makeup wipes, same thing. These can just save you so much grief. And it's just little tips like this that I want to share with people. I should, I should disclose now, I guess I'm fortunate <laughs> my wife tends to carry those, so they don't yeah. go into my thought, but they, they do live in our car. Exactly, so we're kind of doing the female male version yeah, of yeah, the packing yeah. list. Same thing again, don't go anywhere. This is what I've tried yeah. and tested through Fantastic. the... Yeah, or through the Northern Territory. You can't beat the Bushmans. Not, by the way, we're not sponsored by anybody. No. <laughs> sunscreen, use whoever you want. It doesn't really matter to me who you use. I personally don't love using a lot of sunscreen. I try to wear clothing that will protect me, hence the hat. I don't have a choice. Yeah. I just have to wear sunscreen. I know. But also you can buy these Unreal Buffs. These things are great, like really high up around your neck and you can pull them. They're also good for keeping you warm, but they're actually great for sun protection. They're actually good for the dust. Oh. <laughs> Something that can be... Like, having, yeah, having spent time out in the desert, the wind is what I, I really underestimated out there. Flat yeah. plains yeah. just promote lots of wind. And it's, yeah. it can be... It doesn't have to be necessarily dramatic wind, but it's constant. And it's, right? hot and, and it's horrible to get your face yeah. burned and your lips burned. Yeah. You might even have sunscreen on, but it doesn't protect you. This thing's unreal. Um, another good option there is also the fly nets. I know. Yeah. And... A good example of that, we went away last year with the MDC owners group and we went and shot a whole lot of footage. We got into the Big Red Bash, if you were there last year, you remember it was full on 
rain. Like mm. so many people had trouble getting there. A lot of people had to turn around. So it was this much mud on the bottom of my shoes, which I'll talk about in a moment. It was full on. But within two days, that all turned into dust again. It was just incredible dust. And then the fly nets came out, not actually at the bash, but it's on the way home. The guys went and shot some footage down the top, I think it was um, Haddon Corner, yep. and they needed fly nets. Yeah, it's, and yet they we, can be we, were there, we were there a week earlier and it was just all rain and it was beautiful. But yeah, so you really a fly net's essential. Uh, heavy duty poncho, five yep. bucks from Bunnings. Yep. It, or I, I carry a good quality. Um, of just, course, just you fly. do. <laughs> just, yeah, just essentially a um, what are they called? Like a hard shell jacket. Yeah. So just a lightweight hard shell jacket. You can roll it up. Yeah. It's about being compact and available. If you well, need that's it. the thing, and and like you can accumulate. That's probably something we should say too. If you're new to camping. Don't get caught up in going out and buying every single thing that opens no. and shuts because it'll cost you a fortune. No. It, it, just accumulate it as you go each year, buy yourself more stuff, which Correct. is really good. And in the meantime, a five buck poncho is going to do the same job. Absolutely. Um, not going to look as cool, but it's going to do the same job. Speaking of rain. I know, we're shooting this <laughs> we're in the rain, this in which the is hilarious. <laughs> but that's camping, that's why we decided just to keep going. Doesn't matter, we, we adapt <laughs> and overcome, right? I know. Rain. If you're going to the Big Red Bash, gumboots, essential. Yeah. I take these. These are rubber soled and they're kind of suede, but they're also fur lined inside. Oh my God. I've had these for like 20 years. My kids gave them to me as a Mother's Day present 20 years ago and they're still kicking around. They're good. One thing I want to like, when you're at the campsite, and you'll know this from camping, uh, Big Red Bash, you don't have burrs or anything there, but it's just so much dust or mud and ore. So you've got your outdoor shoes, which again, the big thick leather um, outer and the good soles because the cold air, the cold coming up from the ground is freezing so I find these types of shoes really protect your feet Definitely. from the cold and if your feet are cold all your whole body's cold but you can't wear them inside your caravan because they're no. usually covered in dust or mud so then I've got a pair of shoes off or boots off-road slippers off slippers <laughs> yeah that's right that I wear as well and again these things were coated in mud too so then I just had socks mm. in the van but you want zippers you don't want to be cumbersome laces because it's just, there's nothing more arduous than, uh, yeah. You, yeah. You're already having visions. I'm already of, having visions yeah, of where, how we exactly. deal with it. That's right. Other things you want when you're there. Head lamp, but a good headlamp. Mine's got yep. the rechargeable one. Yep. you got the... This is a, the AAA battery fed one. Uh, look, yeah. we were discussing this earlier. Look, they're fantastic, but with technology now, needs an upgrade. Um, <laughs> if you can get a USB chargeable battery, yeah. uh, headlamp, um, they go a long way. The battery's going to last a lot longer. Yeah. There's nothing worse than pulling it out and the batteries are flat, or you always put in new batteries every time. And what do we carry? Batteries. Yay. We always carry spare batteries. Well done. AAAs, double A's, yeah, all those types of things without fail. I want to point out something in my list, my pile that you don't have. Sure. <laughs> Which I thought you would have for sure. A little old humble first aid kit. I do. I do actually have the first aid kit. <laughs> I know you've got I just it in didn't your car. get it out. I didn't get it out. And I'm teasing. Yes. You've got it in his car. You can get a big one, family pack, small one. Yep. This thing in here actually, it's pretty unreal. It's just got, you know, band aids, tweezers, um, gauze. You can add to it, take away from it. I'm not that reckless. I don't really even need it that much. But it is really great to have there. Um, yep. A friend of ours through the MDC owners group just recently found himself bitten by a snake. I oh, know. Like, how crazy is <laughs> Amazing. that? Amazing, yeah. And it happens, you know. It also happens when you're wearing thongs in the long grass. And look, it's knowledge too, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, thongs in yeah. Practical but footwear for the application, yeah. They knew what to do. So there's actually things that you can have and you can buy it through the MDC owners group, the MDC Oz RV owners group. They are now the... Um, Flying doctors, I think, have actually put it forward where they've got their snake bite kits. Yep. And you can buy it through there and actually give money back to the Flying Doctors Association, which is yep. really great. But that's something, if you're going into those kind of areas, even consider having a snake bite kit yep. and actually understanding, watching a YouTube video and understanding how and what to do sure. if that happens. My last thing before I cross back over to you and give you your turn again, and the guys laughed at me when I told them about this, but this has many applications, and I'm going to let you use your imagination <laughs> for that as well. It's a bucket. My imagination is flying. <laughs> it should. There's a lot of applications. <laughs> yeah. But no, the, the, lid. a bucket is something that I actually carry too. Yeah. Um, I actually carry a collapsible PVC one, which yeah. is excellent too. Yeah. I don't know if we've got the same visions and, and applications, <laughs> but mine's actually very good. I use mine for washing up. So often yeah. I would travel just living out of the car as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and washing up out of the back of the car can be a bit cumbersome. And I don't want to carry a big bucket, so I've got a collapsible PVC yeah. one, which is fantastic. It only need to often wash up a couple of plates and cups or mm. yeah, bits and pieces, and that's enough. Well, I'll tell you why the lid's good, because when you're at the bash, again, just keeping it bash relevant, it's um, on organic 
um, farmland. So they're not actually allowed to, we're not allowed to drop any grey water. Like, and to be respectful, you just shouldn't even just do it anyway. Like, yeah. it's, people are very respectful and the organisers actually have grey water tanks. So you, you have um, outdoor kitchen, you've got the nozzle of the hose goes into the bucket under the outdoor kitchen. You let your sink water out and even bath water if you want to, like your shower water. Yeah. And then you can just put the lid on that. So if the worst thing happens, it doesn't splash or tip over or anything. That's a good application. It's, mm. it's a good thing to point out as well. If you're camping by creeks and rivers, um, exactly. there is regulations that do state, I think it's cannot dump any uh, grey water within 10 metres of the creek. Mm. Um, so if you're parked up, beautiful creek front camp, mm. don't let your dish water drain straight exactly. into the creek or only short drain well, of the creek. So, take it, yeah. walk it uphill, take it down the road, just easy thing to do. Swatch, swatch it out and keep the creeks clean. 100%. Okay, why don't you keep enlightening us? Keep enlightening us. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how we go. Well, look, I guess on the topic of medical, um, this is something that, look, I'm involved with some four-wheel drive clubs in my private time. Um, and something we have recently adopted, which I think is a great idea, mm. is, and more, I guess, if you're travelling remotely on your own or very small group, is essentially a medical... Uh, mm. form. What this is, is a very high level, detailed piece of information about your medical conditions or medical status. Yeah. It's not about sharing information with all your friends. This has emergency contact information. It has any known medical history and any medications you might be on. So the purpose of that is that mm. if you come into trouble, have a snake bite or something like that, yeah. and you are sort of with your car or, you know, if God forbid something else happens, yeah. um, this so is crazy, something that crazy stuff can happen. It doesn't have to be, you know, horrific, but it can end up that way. Yeah. Know? This is a form that lives in the glove box. Anybody mm. can go in, you share that information with, well, you tell people that you're traveling with that you have this available yeah. on board. So should they need it for an emergency, it's there and ready to go. Because yeah. you don't want conflicting information and nobody there to help mm. explain. Mm, What's thank going you. On. That's right. And you can have contact details there too of other pe of people to get in yeah, touch with. Yeah, emergency contacts, yeah. your own details. That's yeah, so great. All those types of things. Because we rely so much on our phones for all that, but like they run out. Yeah. And then what? Hundred yeah. percent. Or someone can't get into it because it's password protected. Yeah. So. Another thing is, um, if you something I've discovered, and I could be I could be a little I could be wrong, but something I've learnt is that when you're remote or you're out of range, your phone is constantly searching for a signal. Mm. That does put a fair bit of strain it on your battery. Strain, yeah. So if you're looking to preserve um, battery life as well, switch off your mobile data searching mm. if you know you're not going to need it, mm. and it stops your phone actively searching for that signal. That's which a great tip. can help save battery. Thank you. <laughs> Speaking of emergency comms. Well, this is the serious side of the podcast. Oh, my God. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you're going to need me for comic relief. I know. Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, I'm not very funny. Um, <laughs> So one thing I actually carry too, and look, this is, yeah, <laughs> unbranded, but I choose, I've actually chosen a Zolio. Mm. So this is a personal um, emergency loca location beacon, so an EPIRB. This works in two ways. One, it allows me to send an SOS, which is in the form of a um, EPIRB. Mm. That sends a signal to an emergency response centre. They then send a communication to an Australian response team. Mm. And I will then get a message back on my phone confirming that do I or do I not want emergency help. Wow, so that's awesome. It will trigger a response. They will, I'll get a response back within a couple of minutes and then they will send out a, essentially a search party for mm. me if I confirm that I do need a problem, I do need a rescue or something like that. You need a problem. <laughs> <laughs> the thing I really like about this is I've got three kids yeah. and they love pressing buttons. So if they do press it, which yeah. I'd stash it away so it's not a problem, yeah, yeah. but if they do happen to find it, um, awesome. they actually confirm before they start sending out planes. Mm. Um, so <laughs> we don't want to send planes out with <laughs> some kids just been playing with buttons. So yeah. very smart uh, technology and very smart device. All this requires is satellite communication. It doesn't require any uh, mobile connection on your phone. Yeah. And it allows you to text uh, loved ones. You can nominate who you want to text and mm. communicate with. Mm. And it also gives you an option. It provides a little tick button, and that's an I'm OK button. Okay, so cool. the I'm OK is you press it, and it will drop a pin in your current location yeah. and send that to the designated contacts you have set up in your device. Yeah. And it'll say, I'm OK, I'm all good. Mm. So once a day, if I'm away on my own, I'll send that to my wife, let them know that I'm at camp and she knows where I am and all's good. Fantastic. Very cool little bit of kit. And I yeah, they're not that expensive. So yeah, I should something probably, to consider. I should probably consider that, you know, yep. like I'm doing a remote trip going to the Big Red Bash, then heading up to Kakadu. Yep. So I'll be in convoy with people. But again, it's just, you can't rely on phones. And 
I've got. I like those better because they're not a sat phone. Can I show you my 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 version of that? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> I got to clean some... on steroids. Here we I go. I have to clean some space, but it's nowhere near as <laughs> it's nowhere near as compact. As compact as that. So this is. I'll show you that in a minute. <laughs> I know. Oh. This is this is. We had a lot of fun in the office. I know. Getting ready for this. We're, look, I guess we're travelling in caravans, right? I know. It's, space isn't a consideration. I'll just slide in my Starlink, <laughs> which is my own. I go, you know, with a trusty little satellite. Oh. Look at this. You, that versus that. Look, this this will get you out of trouble. Yeah. Particularly because I made um, a bit of a foolish choice last year. I didn't go onto a network that has nationwide coverage right. on the phone, which in Australia, nothing has nationwide coverage. <laughs> but Telstra is, and this is no ad for Telstra, believe me, but it does have better range. Yep. I was Optus. Yep. Apparently in South Australia, I heard, Optus is pretty great. And in Birdsville, it was great. But everywhere else that I went, all around Queensland, did a massive lap. Uh, not great. The, sh so, the short of it is you can't rely on mobile communication. This was heaps better than Starlink. Yep. Um, and just, you know, while it's all about me, <laughs> <laughs> I also take monitor. I can't believe this. <laughs> I can't believe this. Well, the thing is, Sam. <laughs> this is the new work from home, right? It, this is exactly, look at my this pile. Is the, this, this is the new remote desktop. Well, yeah. this is the thing. I went away for two months and yeah, I'm not loaded. So I had to do a bit of work while I was away and yeah. it was unreal. So this lived pretty much permanently set up on my little dining table in, I took away the XT10E and um, terrific vehicle. So we sat it was pretty amazing. I sat at Big Red Bash and in the mornings there's no music on, so I would like literally stand up my Starlink, sit on my laptop and because... Watch Rage. Yeah. <laughs> watch Rage. <laughs> no, I could have, <laughs> but um, watch movies. No, I um, actually did a little bit of work, did some emails, kept in touch with the world, made a little bit of money. Right. And there's plenty of people. I met a lot of people. Um, I did a little bit of writing for Caravan World last year right. and I'm, a lot of their journalists are on the road 24-7 and if you don't have great eyesight. Yeah. And they're so funny, I put it out there on socials and a lot of people came back to me and said, oh, I travel with a monitor too. I thought I was so unique and original. No, it, apparently look, not. They're not uncommon. <laughs> I've got to say, you, you see them more and more popping up in caravan parks and yeah, yeah, out yeah. of locations. So. All right. Your turn. This is enormous. Come on. This is, <laughs> out, this is outrageous. All right, let's go back to the more practical side I of things. I know. What will actually get you there? <laughs> what will get us there? Um, look, something else. I'm gonna keep, I'm still keeping it simple, right? We've literally gone through bow shackles, <laughs> linchpins, Anderson plugs, and trailer connectors. The other thing is hose connectors. I oh, know. That gave me a bit of These a laugh. things go missing. <laughs> left, right, and centre. Sticky fingers, caravan parks, you know, oh, locations. Oh, that why that is? That's why I carry these. The other thing that's really noticeable is making sure you bring the adapter to fit it onto the tap. That's actually sensible. So simple, like, mm. and so overcome. I've been caught out myself where I've gone, yeah, we've been traveling around Tasmania and said, oh, we need to go fill up the tanks. We get there and, oh, whoops, where's the piece? Yeah, and so, it's a big deal if you let the tank get really low. Oh, too low, you water. need to fill up. That's, yeah. Which, yeah, good call. Yeah, which All is right, then, you've redeemed yourself. Redeemed yourself, okay. <laughs> which kind of is a segue to, you know, You'll get told this at handover and things like that. Yeah. Some hose. Always True. carry some hose, whether it be for filling up, whether it be for emergency. You know, I've seen guys which have had issues with fuel lines uh, yeah. in their cars, and it could be simple as catching a stick, ripping out a fuel line, cutting it or with mm. a sharp rock or something like that. Cutting up a piece of this and, yeah, with a couple of hose clamps as well, which always carry hose clamps, mm. um, that can, it's enough to get you to perhaps the next town. It's, yeah. And that's what you want. You just want to be able to get back to a service centre of some description to keep mm. you going on your way. Yep. It's about not waiting. So gotcha. The other thing there is, yeah, a power cable. Yeah. Making sure it's actually a rated 15 amp power cable. Yep. Um, this is actually just an extension lead. I couldn't grab my other one, but yeah, you know, this can be used for pumping stuff out of your inverter. You want to work outside, set up your Starlink outside. No, there I you do. go. We Always did. things to have on hand. So. They are very handy. Um, we also talked a little bit about comms, communication. We've both got this one. Yeah. I, was, I know. I was gifted this. I was rather naively went off on my trip last year and didn't have any way of communicating with people mm. in my convoy. So Mandy and Rowley, who are part of the MDC owners group, gifted me this, which was pretty... Fantastic. You just told me the value of it. I didn't <laughs> it was, And I used it daily. 
Yeah, they're fantastic. Daily, yeah. Well, you don't have to have a high quality one. I guess that's an example of something mm. that's yeah a really high quality unit. Um, this is a lower yeah lower quality unit mm. that I just give to my kids. It's great around camp. They run off. Yeah. They take these. I look after the good one myself. So yeah, they don't smash yeah, it yeah. up. Yeah. Um, but the important thing with this is if you're going to have a UHF in your car or on your person and use it in your car, which you can use these driving along, that's fine. Mm. It's important to really know what channels are safe and yeah okay to use so this is actually and you can get this anywhere off the internet it's a uhf channel list and essentially what this is highlighting is that of the 80 channels on the uhf band or the ultra high frequency band in australia yeah there are some here that actually you cannot use they're actually dedicated as emergency use channels only so uh -huh. things like channel 5 channel 35 um they're emergency use channels that shouldn't be used by civilians. There are dedicated channels oh, for general use, which is anything out in the highway, channel nine. Mm. Truckers and highways use channel 40. Yeah, that's the one we use a lot up in Cape York. Yep. Everyone was on it. Like everybody was on it and it, it helped phenomenally with being able to overtake. Yep. You know, when you're towing a van on the back, I'm not the world's most experienced person. So I loved that the people in front of me could communicate yep. and it was, a, it made it, the experience so much easier. Yep. Oh, look, it's it's being able to communicate with the truck, telling them that you're mm. about to pass uh, is is imperative. And the same for them if they're approaching you. Yeah. yeah. They may call you, so make sure it's turned on. The important oh, yeah. thing to remember with UHF, they're not for conversations unless you're on your own dedicated channel and yeah. you know that you channel is 40. clear, right? Yeah, jump off 40, go somewhere else. Correct. Mm. A agree on a channel between the group and make sure you yeah, use that for your conversation so you're yeah. not chewing up channels. Um, but please download a copy of this if you haven't got it already. Um, we can probably put a link up to this uh, on the actual episode and you can mm. download a copy for yourself. Um, stick it in your glove box, put it in your sun visor so yeah. it's always there so you know what you're doing. So. That's excellent. I didn't know about that so I actually will look that up before I there go away. Go. Cool. Yeah, easy it's thing It's etiquette. It's kind of camping etiquette. It's etiquette. Road and etiquette. Especially crossing the desert as well. If you're going to move on from the bash and head out across the desert, um, you know, it's important mm. to call ahead going over sand dunes, things like that, because oh the last gosh, thing yeah. you want to do is come head on with a sand uh, with another mm. car coming the other way. Mm -hmm. So call ahead, car approaching, heading eastbound or westbound. Um, that way, if they're on channel, which they should be, yeah. Yeah, you know someone's coming over the hill. Perfect. Great advice. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Told. What is doing these things? <laughs> All right, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like put you in it now. Yeah, okay, now okay. put me in it. Show me the size of your torch. Okay, <laughs> right. <laughs> it's a, not the size that matters, Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> so, USB chargeable, nice and compact. Same. Yep. Big. Big. <laughs> Could be a weapon. You, you won't lose it, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, look, I carry this in a little bug out bag. I actually have another one in the back of the car. It's a little bug out bag. I carry Leatherman in here. What's actually, a bug out bag? What's a, uh, so, a bug out a... bag is a bit of like a grab and go. Oh, right, thing. I gotcha. So, every time yeah. I go camping, every time I'm going in the car, traveling anywhere, yeah. this comes with me. For the reason that, it's got things like cigarette lighter, if I need to start a fire, I don't smoke, but I carry that. It's yeah. got a Leatherman. That's cool. It's got Panadol. Yeah. In the back section, I've got some other bits and pieces. And I think a lot of this comes from my scouting days. I've, oh. got, I've got a charger for the, for the torch if I need it. Yeah, that's, I've this got is great. A, piece, a small piece of rope, and this doubles as, pull this out, a clothesline oh my God. for when I get wet. <laughs> when clothes get wet, yeah. I've never paid more for pegs than I have at Birdsville. That's hilarious. Clothes pegs. Yeah, I've yeah, spent, yeah, yeah. yeah, you spend a week on the road getting out there, you might just want to wash a few pairs of clothes mm. and you want to hang them up and you realise you forgot your pegs. I also carry a Sharpie. Um, just What's for, that for? It's just for a yeah, bit of graffiti <laughs> on the way. Just make sure everyone knows that I was here. Sam was here. <laughs> um, no, look, it's just for marking, th whether it be marking, um, I don't Your know, belongings. if I'm measuring something, marking my belongings in a group, like yeah. you mark Melissa's plastic bin. You know. <laughs> no one wants to use that. <laughs> mark, mark your UHF. You know, it could, you could have yeah, people that have got the same products lying around. Yeah, that's, a, that's a first brilliant. aid kit, write your name on it. Little things like that, that just, yeah. it's about just protecting things. But also, if I want to cut something, if I want to cut a piece of hose, say, to length, I know I can just mark it quickly. Clean, it's That's all unreal. So just little things that... So practical, Sam. I know. I didn't realise how practical I was. I, <laughs> no. I think it's from my scouting days from when I, I was a kid. I think so. So what I can see, is there anything else you want to show off? Look... Because you've got more stuff there. But I've know. got more stuff. Uh, look... What's essential? I'll shoot through some of these. We don't need to go into detail. But critical, I always carry a bearing kit. 
spare bearing kit okay. because you know you want to make sure the bearings are going to be the exact fit for the trailer that you're actually and towing. And again, this is just giving it to an expert once Correct. we get there. It's yeah. not about you doing it, it's about having it there on hand so you've got the right product makes to so fit much the sense. right application. Yeah. I carry spare wheel studs. Yep. You could be changing a tyre and it just rolls away and <laughs> I don't want to be walking off with four out of five or five, uh, five out of six studs. Yeah. A couple of spare studs. You know, okay, they weigh that's nothing, cool. they cost $15. Gaffer tape, always essential. handy. Yeah, essential. One thing that I do also carry is, and this is part of my um, puncher repair kit. Excuse me while I just pull some of these out. Puncher okay. repair kit lives in the car and the trailer, but this within is here is actually the valve centers. So these are really small little things. Do you know what these are? Mm. Have you ever seen them? Yes, I have. You have seen those? Yeah. So these sit in the actual valve in your tire. Mm. So should it get jammed up with mud or sand or grit yeah. or whatever, they can actually, or they break, yeah, they can break from time to time, um, they'll leak out and mm. there's no way of plugging the tire. So save swapping out your spare or if you've already used your spare, yeah. valve center, so simple and so lightweight, but they're always, they're always part of a puncture repair kit. So again, good to have on hand. Yeah. Don't rely on somebody else having it. And you know what's funny, our first day out last year when I was traveling in convoy with the MDC owners group, I was the... I got a puncture. Yeah. First night. Yeah. Yeah, and then we woke up the next morning. My you, tire was you can never pick it. You can never yeah, pick it. Yeah, yeah. And the guys came. They jumped in with all the right gear. I, I didn't have any of it. Yeah. And I was lucky. I was in convoy. But as you say, even if I have the materials, and then can help. they can help. You know, the people with more knowledge can help me do it. Yeah. But at least I can say, here, here's my thing. Totally. Mm. What else do you got? Then I'm going to run through my tool set and show you what I carry because that's another contentious well, I'm going to be one. really quick, okay? Because I've sort of like You've run through everything. I do, I do. But this is um, towels is a big deal. You do, like I travel solo most of the time or maybe with one person. So towels aren't such a big deal. If you're in a family of five, it can be a massive yep. deal actually. Beach towels, bath that's towels. That's a lot of space. <laughs> it's a heap of stuff. Today. So like a Turkish, I bought this from a recent caravan and camping show. It's like a Turkish towel much thinner dries really fast yeah, right. and it does exactly the same job doubles as a picnic blanket yeah, so nice. and that's all i'll take i won't take it's that's going to be my bath towel that's going to be my it's a good tip yeah you take one thing that has two purposes yeah but you know what else i've used i'm traveling before and i might actually i'll take one of these a car chamois oh yeah 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 that's my little just to keep the car tip. clean it's for me for photo shoots? Oh, <laughs> no <okay. laughs> it's for me to actually wipe and dry myself and then and then you don't have a wet the issue of a wet towel hanging around in the caravan which is really annoying yeah um, and then you just wrap it up, put it back in the plastic container. Cool. And I didn't bring one. I should have bought one. Um, and the other thing, which you guys, these guys laughed at me so much yesterday. It's so cruel. And I haven't got it because I was shamed. But it's a little little box. can look like anything. And it sits. This is my hot tip for all you people out there that want to be careful. Uh, your phone, your wallet, stuff out of your handbag, your keys and jewellery. Uh, all these things at night time, you take it all off and like you might just chuck it all over the place. You might even leave it in the little the cup holder, the cup holder <laughs> yeah. in your chair. How many times have you gone back out in the morning and yeah. you, everything that you own is sitting out there in the frost and the dew or the rain? Look, we were laughing at you until you did say, explain until it. you explained and yeah. said, yeah, how many times have you left it in the cup holder? And I went, oh. And yeah. because I do travel on my own, I'm in charge of everything, including security. Yeah. And, you know, so you become more security conscious. So that's where all my stuff would go. So at night time everything I just dump it all in there and have a quick sight of it and it would just sit in this nice neat little thing next to my head yeah cool and I know a lot of people because I'm on the Facebook groups are concerned about security you know we have to be yeah. there's a lot of places you can go are super safe but there's some places which you know are dodgy and if you leave it in your car if you leave it just out here and you, you know mm. it's maybe not safe Things in the middle of the night so yeah best to have it in your little dedicated box next, yep. to, next to your head next to your pillow well that's another <laughs> interesting segue like one of the other things I carry and it's not about what's in here but it's about how you carry it so I carry these high vis these are just a canvas bag yeah. but these have got little bits and pieces and when they're in the back all packed in with everything else yeah. I can see these right it's yeah. about visibility so, so yeah, I don't lose things you're talking about losing keys wallets yeah. carry the things that I need they're important whether they be the shackles or whatever they sit in there and I can see them and grab them and I know that's the bag that I need that's so, clever it's a cool little piece right. of show us your next couple oh, of top right. things well one we shouldn't he's got so much stuff <laughs> I do <laughs> like a Tetris pack yeah. water yeah, Never yeah. forget water. Like, I, I always carry spare. Yes, you, the trailer will carry water on board, um, yeah. but it's important in the toolkit or in the um, on the drawbar on the front, always worth carrying some spare water. Absolutely. Really, if you are going remote, it's about if you do stop or you run out of water for whatever reason or, you know, get a hole in the water tank like that happens through all damage the time. that can yeah. happen it's yeah like a lot of the trailers are built with protective 
the um, bash plates, the bash plates them. over them. But mm. look, should the worst happen, you don't want to be driving down the road and lose 100 litres of water. And you don't want to be that person in convoy that holds absolutely everybody up because yep. you didn't take that precaution. Yeah. So, and bringing enough water, it's enough probably, water. would you I, would you say it's more more important than carrying more fuel oh, if you had to choose. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, exactly. uh, I, can, I can stop. If I run out of fuel, I can sit on the side of the road. Yeah, right? and live. And live. <laughs> if I run if yeah. I run out of water, yeah. as long as I can get to the next town, I might be okay. But I could also get to the town and everything's shut mm. or whatever. Yeah. Or not get to the next town. Or not get to the next Because the next town's 100 kilometres away. Correct. So yeah, good call. water, that's, that's the gimme. We trust yeah. everyone probably knows that. Um, but, you know, it's, it has to be said. Yeah. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Um, look, the other thing is... I'm not going to go into too much drama here, but we got a spanner roll. Yeah, that's um, cool. A socket set. Yep. Just for everything we need. And a tool roll. So that's the extent of all my tools. Show um, us inside your tool roll. That's interesting. I love yeah, this. That's my cool. grandma made this. So Are you serious? I love it, yeah. These are cool. Little magnet to, if you lose a little bolt down in the engine bay, these are fantastic. <laughs> They're about $2. They're so good. Um, but really, what I've got in here. Yeah. Um, I had a couple of these things when I tried Yeah, look, it's just essentials, right? So side cutters. Yeah. Um, adjustable wrench. Um, sorry, adjustable wrench and shifter. Uh, Allen keys, pliers. Yeah. You know, one Phillips head, one flat yeah, head. Yeah. Some vice grips. This is brilliant. Um, I actually carry a test light. I know what I'm doing with it. It's just for uh, any electrical faults yep. or things like that. Um, you don't need to worry about it if you don't know what you're doing. And some needle nose pliers. So really mm. a basic setup. It's a design just to keep Allen you going. Keys. Allen keys. I've got a little pry bar. That's always handy if you I do need to move things. No, so it's, it's, <laughs> if you know what you're doing with it, use it. Don't take it if you don't know what you're doing again, with it. But again, you could pull up, someone could need it, Correct. or you might need it, and someone or does the, know. Or the mechanic might say, has anybody got, or, or somebody yeah. else says, has anybody got something that could do this? No, well, this yeah, is I've fantastic. It takes up no room. No. I always thought you have to have a big, massive box. And look, that, that's, so that's why, that's why I, I sort of brought it here, because I do see people carrying around like a whole toolbox with big them. cumbersome box, yeah. That's heavy. That's heavy. And it takes up and room. This, this is, is unreal. This is just nice, small enough. I can roll this it This is up. under the seat. Yeah, it's under the seat or in the drawer in the back of the car. Yeah, I've unreal. Done a bad job rolling this up, but anyway, it does the job. We won't judge you. We won't judge you. Well, thank you. <laughs> um, other little things. Fuses. I always carry spare fuses. Just something for the vehicle. Um, and my uh, piece de resistance. <laughs> This cracked, us, this cracked us up. Going, what's yeah, this for? What's the block of wood what, for? What would you bring a block of wood for? A weapon? A we <laughs> I'm not a violent person. I don't know. This is just... <laughs> what, what would you block of wood. You're not going to sit on it? No. Oh, look, you could sit on it. It, it could be a cutting board. I don't this know. This serves Enlighten a couple of purposes. Me. Enlighten me. So this serves a couple of purposes. This is actually... Could be used primarily. I use it as a jockey wheel brace or jockey wheel holder okay, yeah. to put the jockey wheel onto when you come to a ground that is maybe it's sandy, maybe it's muddy, maybe it's grassy and it's very soft. Yeah. yeah, the front end of some of these trailers can be upwards of 200 kilos. Yeah, they sink. That's a lot of weight yeah. pressing down on that jockey wheel. It's fine in itself, but if you have a yeah, a tow hitch that is certain height, mm -hmm. nothing worse than unhitching and realise you can't get it back on. Or it sinks over yeah. the course of a couple of days. Yeah, which happens. And like I just said, the Big Red Bash got so much rain and it turned to mud. That's a classic example of where it yeah, could have happened. Exactly. So yeah. I carry this for the jockey wheel, but yeah. it's also a really good jacking plate too. So if you're out in on the road out to, say, out west, out towards Big Red Bash, the sides of those roads, you do not drive off the bitumen if oh, it's 100%. wet. Yeah, We have totally. seen, I've got caught there and you mm. cannot get out. It's nearly mm. impossible. So let alone trying to jack off some of that really mm. um, clay soil, a nice flat block of wood yeah. gives you a firm base to, right. to jack you're your redeemed. car off. You're and redeemed. Did you can also double as firewood, I guess, if you get really desperate. <laughs> so... Look, all the other, other odds and ends, we talked about these. Yeah, Greece. fantastic. It's about having everything we've... We you know what we forgot possibly... to bring? And we talked about this yesterday when we were briefing and laughing at each other's lists. Firewood. Firewood? Yeah. Well, need you say it. Mm. I do, oh, I do got... still bring it. Yeah. The uh, firewood, you could either yeah. DIY your own with an okay. axe. Okay, all right. Or one thing I actually always carry, it's not going to keep my fire going all night, mm. is a fire starting little kit. Okay. This is a bit of a sort of a survivalist kind of, I guess, pack, but it's got in a zip tied bag fire starters. Yeah, Just yeah, so they don't get wet. So they don't get wet. Yeah. You can actually also get this stuff now. It's called fat wood, but it's a, oh, wow. it's a really sappy pine mm. and it's highly flammable. Mm -hmm. It smells, it smells, actually smells quite nice. 
It does. It's very eucalypty. Yeah, it's very. Yeah, it was yeah. very piney. So yeah. also, yeah, a little ferro rod, start spark if you need or a match. Okay. Look, the reason I carry this is you are a boy scout. There is. <laughs> There's no heroes when it's raining and you want to fire. Oh, you're my favourite. And I'm just going to finish it off by saying, we'll go in convoy, no worries. I'll hang out with your family. Because, like, yeah. yeah, you got all this stuff. I've got some pretty good people I go camping with. They don't take an axe. They take a uh, chainsaw. Chainsaw. That's the word I'm looking for. Hey, a little chainsaw. Good to know and a hot tip. Yeah. It, chainsaw is fantastic out on private roads or public lands, yeah. but in national parks, they're actually illegal to carry them. If Ooh. you get caught with a chainsaw really? in the Simpson Desert National Park, you are in big trouble. Oh, there's the knowledge piece for you. And there you go. So it, okay. don't rely on a chainsaw and certainly not okay. in a national park. All right. So important to have. This is a fold-up silky saw. These things will do a chainsaw's work in, you know, almost the same time. Oh. These are amazing. They're a Japanese-made saw, but um, very lightweight, a lot lighter than a silky, than a... Yeah, uh, chainsaw. Chainsaw, a and you don't need room. a battery. You know what's really... This, uh, my shopping list has just expanded somewhat. Because <laughs> this be is actually good stuff. Though. No, it's not. And, but it, it's good stuff. So I really see the value yeah. in all of it. That's unreal. Do you have a favourite thing, can't live without thing? Like if I said to you, this is great, but you can't take it all. What's the one thing you're going to take? One thing I'm going to take... It's, it's if a I, hard if I said to, Like if I said two, it would be a UHF. Yeah. And actually the other thing here of all that yeah. is a tarp. Oh, there's so many applications tarp. for a tarp. So, so many. many. Yeah. Whether it be shelter, you could. This could double as a blanket. This is a canvas tarp. It mm. doesn't have to be. It could be plastic. Mm. Um, so it could double as a blanket. It can double as a rain shelter. I put this over my swag if it's really wet. Yeah. If I'm swagging, yeah. um, or if I'm doing mechanic work on the side of the road, I can lay this down. There are lots of uses for this. Oh, it can I've carry firewood. Times. It could yeah. yeah do whatever. So a tarp really handy. Yeah. Or a woolen blanket, which. Yeah. yeah. A you lot never... of people ask in the groups, actually, what's the sort of bedding, you know, when it gets really cold, particularly out of the bash, because it's kind of relevant that's coming up at the moment. And it can get to sub-zero out there. So I just take normal bedding, flanny sheets and a doona and everything. But, you know, you can't go wrong with the old sleeping bag. And it's just no. the sleeping bag within the doona and underneath all yeah. of that. But it's really, I guess, you know, if you're in one of our vans and you've got the diesel heater and you've got that kind of comfort and warmth, you and know, the aircon. You're doing better. Yeah, I mean, they've got the aircon. <laughs> Off grid aircon well. and the Mark yeah, III, they're amazing. I know, but yeah, I think, yeah, you've got to really think sensibly about being warm enough. Yep. And, you know, that is actually the core thing. You know, it's lovely. I, we joke about all the stuff I've bought, but really, I'm nothing without if I'm not warm or if I don't have water. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yep. nothing, you know, and, and the, protect, the ability to be able to contact people if things go wrong. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you so much, Sam. Oh, well, hey, thanks. It's good to share ideas. And as I say, look, Ears are always open. You yeah. never know what you might pick up along the way. Oh, and... I'm sure we'll get we'll get trashed by somebody. Else. <laughs> I'll make sure to pack my Starlink next time we yeah. go. That'll be good. I know, I know. Look, if you've got any questions, you wanna if you wanna be sympathetic and you don't have to judge who's got the better packing. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like they work together really well. Um, you know, leave us some comments, show us some love, which is always beautiful. Share your ideas. Like, yeah. hey, tell us what you carry. Tell us what you think is <laughs> important. How much overkill have I got and how comfortable will Melissa actually be? Yeah. She's very comfortable. So. I know. But you know what? It might be one thing to be able to make money while you're out there, but it's no point if you're, you know, you can't get there. No, but that's true. <laughs> You've got to be able to get there to enjoy the holiday, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's been such a great episode. Thank you so much. We're going to get you back. Thank you. Okay, Definitely. great. Thank you. I want to watch you putting all this into your car. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it all everything has a place and everything I'm in quite its place. Sure. Oh, that's so fantastic. <laughs> Thanks, great. guys. Thanks for watching this episode and can't wait for the next version of whatever we come up with. Great. Sounds good. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks so much. Thanks so much for listening in. We really hope that you enjoyed it. If you want to see more from us, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Make sure that you comment down below and share with all of your camping buddies. And most importantly, why don't you join the Facebook group? It's called MDC and Oz RV Owners Group. And that's where you can go and get all of your camping questions answered.